Trading futures and options on futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all traders and investors. Oftentimes in futures trading, you have a high combination of leverage and volatility. And although this could be an equation for opportunity, it's also an equation for risk. So be careful. Only fund your futures trading account with risk capital. My personal definition of risk capital is money I could afford to lose, doesn't change my lifestyle, or overly stress me out. As human beings, we make bad decisions when we're under stress, so be in a good spot. Remember, micro contracts could be friends. Take it easy on the day trade margins. You get plenty of leverage without maxing out on those day trade margins on a regular basis. We'll be taking a look at a real-time simulated live NinjaTrader trading platform today, and none of this should be construed as trade or investment advice. Past performance not indicative of future results. Well, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Traders Workshop. I'll be your host, Tom Schneider, CMT with Ninja Trader Traders Workshop, where we like to bring in our Ninja Trader ecosystem partners and have them showcase what their specialty is to help you become a better and well informed trader. And this week is no different. We have a returning guest this week. It's my pleasure to welcome back, while well, he's a lot of things, he's an author, of course. Uh, he is co-founder of Trade Guider, but he's uh, just a great friend of the show and, and and longtime friend of Jim Cagnina, Gavin Holmes. How you doing, Gavin? Well, it's a pleasure. Yeah, it always is. Uh, and Tom, I'm looking forward to meeting you when I come out to the U.S. in yes. December, January. We're looking forward to, to that. Um, I've not met you personally, but you obviously become a friend just by it because my wife, you know, and we've got connections going into Chicago where I lived for many years. And and, and obviously with, with CAGs, I, I go back, well, many, many years. I, I, I was counting it all the time, you know, I was counting it up this morning going, well, how, how many? When did I move to Chicago? When did that happen? Right. When did that happen? And, and you know, we, we, we're, we, we, I was looking back this morning uh, as I've got some, some books to show everyone. And it's very, very interesting. You go back in time, and Steve Jobs said it perfectly. You, you, you can't connect the, the dots going forwards, but you can when you start going backwards. And that's what I hope to help people with today. I've got a chart up here of, of, of gold, but um, but it's an old, it, now you're going to look at this and say, well, the gold's not trading at that right now. Don't worry about it. I will show you, hope to today, why volume is vital. And we've got uh, a friend of mine, Tirunagapan, that works closely with me now, um, who's developed something. Well, you've met Tiru, both of you, and uh, he, he's developed something that's being plugged into Ninja. It's not there yet, but it's pretty close. And it just works with, I think it's complementary to what we teach. Back over that, to you, Tom. That's awesome. Thank you, Gavin. And um, for those of you who are first joining us, Traders Workshop, uh, like I mentioned, the ecosystem is where, uh, you know, you can find what we talk about. Uh, Gavin's services live in the ecosystem. But um, before we just jump into the charts, and I'm looking at the chart right now, so I can see what you're about to see, and it's fascinating. But before we do that, I want to, you know, Gavin, if you can just give a little bit of history, uh, how you got into the markets, and, you know, what, uh, how did you do, discover uh, volume spread analysis, and, and what led you to Trade Guard, Guider? So my background, you know that, you all know this, most of you who, who follow me know I'm an ex-police officer. I, I retired and then started my own business. But to keep this really quick, because I know we've got limited time, uh, I started an internet business, a uh, an exhibition design company, so an entrepreneurial type thing where I decided I don't want to work for anyone else. I, I want to work for myself and, 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 ma and make it work. Through that business, the internet business, I got a phone call out the blue uh, from a gentleman who I never heard of. Um, his name was Tom Williams through um, one of his customers who introduced me and they came to my offices at the time I was living in Beckenham in Kent, for those of you that know it. And they came up to the office and I sat down with them and they said, well, look, we've got this, we see you, you're good at the internet. You've got exhibition stand design. We really, we're fascinated. We think you could help us. That was the start. Of, that meeting was the change of my life. No two ways about it. Uh, and it changed my life in many ways. But what happened was, I knew nothing about the financial markets, but I've actually written this book. Now, I've got two books, third one's coming out, but it all started with that one. 
the magazine. Now, you may not be able to see that properly, but it's the magazine of Wall Street. Now, the, the point is that was written at the principles on August the 3rd, 1918, and was given to me by a good friend of mine, Sebastian Manby. This book was written in 2012. It was actually published then, and, and that's my book. And Tom Williams told me something very interesting. He said, a book is a calling card. That's it. It will open up all sorts of avenues for you. Because if you've got knowledge, and we're looking at Ninja Trader here, we look at the chart. Now, what, what, what do we do very quickly? Very simply, we're chart readers. That's what we do here at Trade Guider. And we've partnered with Ninja Trader specifically on this platform because it's good. But more importantly, I learned this without any knowledge of stochastics, moving averages, all these different things that, that, that I didn't know. And I applied it, and I've made a living from it, but, but that is just part of the story. We haven't got time to tell it. But there is an opportunity for everyone here to get uh, not just my book, that, that it's in PDF format, but Tom's book. And it's a gift. You can have it because you're a Ninja Trader follower. And we'll we'll show you the link for that. But but it's there's no obligation. You don't have to get it if you don't want to. You can go to Amazon and buy the book. But what I learned very briefly was my skills in law enforcement and in managing a business has helped me massively as a trader to understand the markets and how they move. And I'm going to prove it to you now on a chart. Because once you've got that in your head, you go, oh, oh, I can see that. Then you almost have to reprogram the way you think to, to make decisions. Now, I, 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 I know this because I've done many trading um, competitions and stuff. It's very controversial, that's the, probably the word, to say that buying happens as the market's collapsing. And selling is happening as the market's rising. It's... Very few educators teach it. But, Tom, that's exactly what we teach at Trade Guider, and we'll prove it today. Well, I love it. And, yeah, the, these tenets or these uh, beliefs, certainly, um, when you explain it, makes sense. Uh, and and cer certainly with the charts in front of us, they make sense. Um, you know, one of the things I'd like to do here, because we've had you on before and talking about um, VSA and all, and all of this, I think, you know, if we were to go over several markets today and focus on the charts and focus on what you see as as the creator, as the interpreter of Tom Williams' work and beyond, um, you know, I think it's invaluable and I think will help people understand, you know, exactly what's happening. So, you know, maybe, Mission Control, if we could jump into the first chart and, and very key point here is because we were talking, Cags and I were talking about gold this morning and how it just couldn't break 2000. Well, obviously on this chart, if you can see the scale, uh, it, it's a different portion of the chart, right? It's 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 not current right now. It's two years old and more. So we just want to preface that. If you're looking at a gold chart on your Ninja Trader and you see something different, it's because this is two years plus in the past. So I just want to preface that. Yeah, and, and that's an important point, Tom, because what I want to do is just... I can look in the I can I can go right to the right edge, which we will, because I did a YouTube video last week where I said gold will decline. But that was when the news was saying because of what's going on in the Middle East, it's gonna it's, it's a safe haven. We'll get to that. But what I want to really teach people today is the importance of ultra high volume and why it appears. Because when we talk about volume spread analysis, which is all going to be given to you in the two books, so you've got it, what are we looking at? Are we looking at mathematical formulas? No. Are we looking at things that have happened in the past? Yes. Because past price, whether we say it doesn't affect the future price, actually, you can look at the past price and predict. Now, I want to read to you something that, that when I woke up this morning to prepare for this interview, I have not looked at my book, which is this one, for a long, long time. <laughs> and there's a couple of things in here that, that caught my eye, which is relevant to what's going on right now. The first thing 
that, that, that came up. And sometimes when you've written a book, you don't want to, it's like doing an interview. You don't sometimes want to go back and look at it. But actually, this summarizes exactly what we're going to do today. And it says, it, it, it's page 139 of my book, Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money. It's a list of key points I want you to remember from the previous chapters of the book. If you haven't read it, then, then I'll give, give you a PDF. We are each unique in our own way. We all may have different account sizes, loss tolerance levels, experience levels of different perspectives and different levels of self-discipline. The VSA strategies are a guide, hence the word trade guider, which I thought that name up, but must be adapted to your trading style and your personality. Only you can do that for yourself. Logical, but that's absolutely correct. VSA, Volume Spread Analysis, which I'm going to show you, principles apply to all markets where there is volume available, which is pretty much everything. And in all time frames, including futures, which is what we're going to look at today, but you can use it for other things too. But we're focusing mostly on futures. Take a holistic approach to your chart analysis. By this, I mean you should emphasize the importance of the entire whole, as well as the independence of its individual far parts. And the reason I say that is I, I just did this demo this morning. And the guy said, which time frame is the best one? Which one? Go on. One minute? Ten tick? Five tick? I'll show you how we can, how we can solve that problem. Strength will appear on down bars. A down bar is categorized as a price bar that's closed lower than the previous bar. No doubt about that. Weakness will appear on up bars, which we can see on this price here. We can see it here. The market's gone up and a red indicator appears. So, so we're looking at Three universal laws on all the things that we're going to show you. Supply and demand, cause and effect, and effort versus result. The question you have to ask yourself, however, is the background analysis of the chart, as I'm about to show you, is very important to the future. But the first statement any educator will make is past price is no guarantee, which is correct of future performance. So why is past price even relevant? I'll show you. Is the news good or bad? That's one thing in my book I talk about, the news, because I didn't believe what Tom was telling me, Tom Williams, who invented this. He's passed away in 2016. And I've got you know his book here next to me, and there's some great statements, but I haven't got time to read them. But the question he said to me, well, Gavin, ask yourself the question. Is demand overcoming supply? I don't know. Is it? He said, well, the chart tells you. Is supply overcoming demand? It's on the chart. All patterns, this is a relevant point, that are seen in the past will be at the right end of your chart, but they will come in different intensities. That's true. Well, look at gold. VSA, volume spread analysis, is a discretionary methodology that still requires, and I stress this, discipline and money management. This is not a black box. This is not green and red. This is like a pilot getting into the aircraft and looking at the instruments to make the right decisions. Is it foggy? Is it clear? Is it windy? If you understand what we've got, you'll understand that. VSA is much more effective when used with support and resistance or the Wyckoff method, which is what we teach. And finally, you must more, you, well, you, you must, definitely must use more than one time frame to understand the chart. And I'm gonna talk about that today. Is there any questions, Tom, before I get into this analysis? No, I think it's it's fairly straightforward. I mean, you know, I, I like the idea of not using one approach 
or one trigger, one signal uh, without, you know, just without question, right? You, you, you have to use your discretion. You have to understand other aspects of what's happening in the chart and looking at other time frames helps uh, uh, build out that picture. And, and by the way, I don't know if you know this, I've had flight training. So putting okay. that into the cockpit really, you know, when you're, when you're getting ready for a flight, you're looking not only at the weather outside, you're also looking at the outside of the plane, making sure there are no dings and dents on the wings. That's and then it. you're looking at the panel, you know, the panel of instruments inside. So okay. you're multidimensional, just like you are in a, 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 as a pilot of a cock in a, in a cockpit. Yeah, the, the the reason I mentioned that is one of the guys that I've taught in the past was, was a British Airways pilot, and uh, yeah, I I said to him, you know, when we're looking at um piece of software, why why do you need software to trade? Surely you just look at the chart, press a button, and it's long or short or whatever. No, no, I, I, it's like going into the cockpit of an aircraft saying, well, we haven't got a computer, we've got no navigation. But I tell you what, Tom Schneider's a great pilot. He's going to take off without any instruments. He doesn't care about the weather. He he's just going to go down the runway and hope for the best. I just have a start button, right? And that's all I need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm going to show you something. Awesome. You, you, you you're all going to love this because it is what happens. And we're going to go to the right edge. Don't worry. And I'm going to use daily and weekly charts for the moment. But does it work on a one minute time frame? Yes. Does it work on a ten tick? Yes. But the point is, the principles don't change. And the reason I'm so confident on what I'm telling you is because I've done some demos recently to some very big institutional money. And I can tell you, quite frankly, that sometimes they look at this and say, well, you know, we're not using volume. So when I talk about trading in the shadow of the smart money, which is a wonderful, I don't know how I even came up with that name. Sometimes I, I talk to smart money and I'm thinking, you're not actually that smart. So watch, look at gold, okay? Now, I can relate this, if I wish to, to certain stories, okay? You can, you can, you, there's plenty of different things about gold and all of this stuff. There's all sorts of, you know, here, here, you know, gold is a safe haven and all of this stuff. Yeah, I, I can relate all of that, but I don't want to do that. I haven't got time because we've only got about another half, half an hour. So I want to relate it to a chart. But don't worry about whether it's a safe haven or not. Let's go back, which it was at the time gold was going down the toilet, but we had a signal. Now, this is the most probably there's two important indicators in the VSA system to recognize in any time frame, by the way. This one is called the shakeout. Now, I asked Tom <laughs> to explain why did you call it that? Because it was his name. He said, I, I made the word trade count. I said, well, what do, what do you, I mean, the price is collapsing. It, by the way, this happened in BP, in, in, in BP oil in 2010, when they said we can't cap the well. Same thing, right? So on, it's right in front of your eyes. But, but you look at it and you go, it's closed in the middle. It's green indicator. It tells you what shake out is. The next bar's closed up. This is, in Ninja Trader, we built this in, and we've got the SMI indicator, which I will touch on at the end. And I'm sure you know, Tiru Nagapan and the team at Master of the Markets will be looking at this stuff going up well. Well, we are trading together live at a, a big show here in the UK. You can come and see it, and I'll, I'll, you know, if you want to see it, that's fine. But the point is, here we have got uh, an indicator. Now, the shakeout, Tom said to me, I said, explain it to me. What are you talking about? And he used to call me Gav. Gav, imagine you've got a pocket full, each side of you, a pocket full of pound coins, and there's like 50 pound coins in each side. And I need those pound coins, and I'm bigger than you, which he definitely was. He said, so I decide to mug you, I push you on the ground, and I turn you upside down so I can get the coins, and I shake you out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said that's a horrible description but it's what happens a shakeout now that has to be buying because if that was all selling on that volume at the old lows the next bar on this daily chart couldn't close higher but then you would do you, you would all say oh 
Yeah, that's in hindsight. Okay, fine. I agree. Let's look at what selling looks like. Oh, it's a safe haven. Yeah, everyone's that they love gold. It's safe. Look at the volume at the bottom of your chart, ladies and gentlemen. Look at where the price closed and look at where the next price closed. This is the truth. Supply has overcome demand. It has to. Now, if you know this, you doesn't matter if you're using a mathematical formula, whether you've got stochastics on there, you'll be doing what most traders do. And there's a large percentage of traders that don't make it in the moment. They'll be buying into this going, look, because the volume is so high, it's going up. And the logic would be, if the volume is going up and the price is going up, everyone's buying. It's completely wrong. And my job and the job of the whole team at Trade Guider and, again, at uh, Trading the Markets, it's the same thing. We just did an event a few weeks ago, Tiru Nagapan and myself, um, at the so Society of Technical Analysis in London. And you show this stuff and people look at mathematical stuff and say, well, no, no, that's buy. But it can't be. And I can prove it. Look at just two things on this chart which tell you everything you need to know. Okay, I'm going to move it to the middle. We'll get to the right edge because I know everyone wants to know. First of all, the range or the spread. What is volume spread? Volume, massive, spread, wide, in this case, close, middle. That's an indicator that's just come in, funny enough, from Ninja Trade. But volume, spread, analysis. Volume is high, spread is wide, closing right in the middle almost. But that yeah. isn't your clue. As an ex-detective, I'm going to tell you that that's not the clue. The daily chart, it's the next bar closing lower. If that was buying in that volume, you couldn't have that. Now, let's move forward. What happens? Well, of course, we know the price goes down and then it gets brought back down here. And here, you can see the volume increases because the market does, as, as Tiru would tell you, if it's going down and there's no selling pressure on it, it's going to go back up. And then you get the same thing happening over and over again. And so now we can see at the top here, and this was the video I did on, on YouTube. Okay, right here. All right. That's supply. This was when they were saying that the, the price of gold was the safe haven again. Okay, and that was back in May. But if it was a safe haven, everyone would be so happy buying there, it'd go up. But look at where it went, 1820. Now, to go to the right edge of the chart, which I know we're looking at, the last indicator we had was something called no demand. And that is just as important of supply coming in. And in my second book, which you can all get as well, it explains what's going on here. The market is being marked up. And the news, it's the same indicator, by the way, that's, that's there, is inferring that something's going to happen. But let me show you something else. And, Tom, because I, 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 I'm aware there's questions I can't see. Is there, is there any questions? Well, you know, I did, I did have a quick question, a uh, uh, couple, couple questions, actually. When you say no demand, that to me is another way to think of that is buyers have run out, right? So... When there's no demand, uh, you've got that uh, high volume, but yet you have the the bar that doesn't finish towards the high. It, it finishes towards the middle or towards the low, saying that buyers aren't, there's no buying pressure. Buyers have exhausted, right? That's the no demand. Yeah, and the next bar proves it, okay? Yes. Because it, you see, what you got here is you just read the dialogue box, which is built into Ninja Trader. Um, and, yeah, I, I will say this. I, I, I you know, you, you know, uh, and, and Cags knows that I started my trading career with an account with Infinity Futures, which are now is part of Ninja Trade. 
But uh, but but we started off with all of this at the New York Traders Expo, showing people this, and they said, "What are you talking about? I don't know. Where's your stochastic? Where's your candlestick? You know." And, and it became quite difficult for people to understand. I said, well, look, you've just made the correct statement. No demand is exactly what it says. <laughs> the, the, the sellers are in control. So when the market's marked up by the market maker, oh, whoever, we don't care. It's marked up. But look at the volume at the bottom of the chart. It's diminishing. Volume is the gasoline of the market. It's dry, It's the energy force. Right. We're all energy, aren't we? But 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 that is exactly there. So if it's trying to rally with very little energy, Wyckoff talked about this in the magazine of Wall Street. Okay, it's there. I've got all of them, pretty much thanks to Sebastian. Well, most of them. I read back, I'll go, hold on a second, this doesn't make sense. And I'm pre- preparing for this event. I'm saying what he's saying 120 odd years ago. It's not relevant to today. It absolutely is. Markets move on supply and demand. They have to. And no supply. And indeed, as you can see here, a few days ago, when they said safe haven on no demand. Okay. And and I'm only on one chart. I haven't even got to the E-mini S&P yet because we're running out of time. But the point is, you can see that the price has gone down because of this. This it is, uh, and if I had a drawing tool, I'd be able to draw a, a mushroom over the top, which is in trading in the shadow of the smart money, by the way, it explains it. And I said to Tom, so when distribution happens, this is a word, and accumulation happens, distribution, you're telling me, happens as the market's going up. Yes, Gavin, or Gav. And, and buying happens as the market's falling. Yes, Gav. Why? Because if you want to make a profit in a business, you buy low and you sell it high. If you want to make a loss, you buy at the tops and see the price go down because you, you've bought the wrong place. This has to be logical, but you'd be very shocked. And Tom, I know you and I have talked about this, Kanks and I have, we're, when we look at VSA, we can categorically see this. Now, I'll show you this on because I'm, I'm conscious of time. You know, we look at the E mini on, on, on the daily chart, right? Now, this is an interesting situation that we've got because there's a battle going right, it's right happening now between bulls and bears. Someone's trying to take control. I think the, the bulls will get control, but not yet. But if we look back in time, we can see, you know, and very clearly I saw this, is something that's not got an indicator in this system at the moment, but I had it. It's called a spring. Look at the volume. Look at where it closed and look at what the market did. But the key to it wasn't even that. It was that bar there. And in our system, that triggered an email alert, which is come. It's called no supply after the spring. And it's right at the top of the bar. Now, I can show, if I had two hours, I could show multiple charts like this, but I haven't. But the point is, you've got massive volume as the market's marked down to take out all the support levels, and then it's immediately brought back. And, and, it, it, and it's unarguable. And then you say, oh, okay, well, I, I missed that. Don't miss it. There's plenty of others coming. And you'll see these things all the time. And you'll see the market react. Now, we're talking today about futures trading, and I'm conscious it's 5.30 UK time. But I just want to quickly show you what's going on in Bitcoin, because you can trade with NinjaTrader, a micro coin, right? Now, Tom, you might be able to explain that briefly, but I had a customer this morning that, that that's had a long chat with me, and he said, well, look, I, I, you know, I can't buy a Bitcoin at 35000 now. He said, is there a, is there a contract? That, that I could trade that doesn't require that size. Tom, or, or CAGs, either one of you. Can you explain what a micro Bitcoin contract actually is? And it's traded on the CME, right? I'm not, I just want to make sure I'm correct. And True. correct me if I'm wrong, but but it's traded on the CME group. They developed that two, two odd years ago. I've watched it. Um, how does it work? 
And what's the benefit to the user who said, oh, actually, I, I want to trade Bitcoin, but I can't trade it on the big account. That, well, that would be good because I've got customers in here that, that want explanation of that. Sure. So, so that's great. So um, you're correct. Micro Bitcoin was introduced by the CME about two years ago, and it is one tenth the size of a Bitcoin. So the micro comes in there. And the benefits, I think, are the like the benefits of any future, right, which is uh, you get you have um, uh, you can go long or short you fairly easily, right? Whereas if you're trading trading a Bitcoin with a wallet, uh, you don't have that ability really to go short. Just get out of you know you you just get rid of your bitcoins, right? But here you can actually go short just like you could the e mini or gold or crude. Um, there also is a, a, a not a CME contract, but um, on the Coinbase derivative exchange about a year ago. They introduced the Nano, which is one hundredth the size of a Bitcoin. So for uh, you know, you might find at thirty five thousand for a Bitcoin, thirty five hundred for a micro might not even be where you want to be. You want to go a little bit lower, go to a Nano, which is right now would be about three fifty uh, for that. So um, Nano is one hundredth the size of a Bitcoin, micro one tenth. All the benefits of futures trading. Uh, which include being able to go short and go long, regardless, without uh, too much uh, too much hassle, if you will. Yeah, uh, you summed it up perfectly. Yeah, uh, and if you want to find out more, then you would contact Ninja Trader. I've, I, you know, I, I've got a great broker there, but they, they're they're really good when it comes to questions like that and support. So now let, let let's get back to you know trading with volume spread analysis. Okay, so. <clears throat> One of the stories that I've told many times, and I've had quite a lot of questions on this, was was does this work? You know, we're looking at futures today, right? But Ninja Trader does provide stock data because I've got it on my screen here. Now, that that was a great question from this morning from Phil, and you're you're here, I think. Um, you know, well, what's the best thing to trade? Stocks, futures, forex? I said, well, if you're in America, you probably can't trade forex or CFDs. And then the question was asked, because he, he was from the UK, well, what's the difference between a CFD and a futures contract? And I said, you, you're trading and you don't know? Uh, that that was a big, big flag to me, immediately, that you're going to go and put your money in the market. And you've got to understand what a CFD is and what spot forex is, what a futures contract is. Now, this this sort of was a bit of a wake-up call because I said, well, you know you can trade on the CME and you can trade currencies, but it's a futures contract. Well, yeah, it's the same as spot. I said, it's not. And Tom can probably enlighten you all on this, but which is a great lesson. But depending on where you are in the world will depend on what you can actually trade and with which company, Okay. And I think this is a great lesson. So a contract for difference, a CFD, you can just type it into Google and say, what's a contract for difference, right? Are you actually trading directly with the market? Go and find it out for yourself. I haven't got time to explain it, but I'm doing mentorship courses with Tiru to, to do exactly that, explain. And we're, we'll, we'll talk about that once we've um, got Tiru on the ecosystem. The second thing to, to realize is there are a lot of benefits to trading a futures contract. Now, I particularly, yeah, people are going to say, well, you know, if I trade Forex over here, I don't pay commissions. But you've got a spread, which you probably mo might not understand. So, Tom, I I'll, I'll go to you back on this one. Um, can you explain? Because because we these are people who've asked me questions, and I, I, I want to, we're, we're short of time. What is the difference between, say, trading spot Forex, where you've got no commissions, and trading with, let's say, Ninja Trader or a futures company out in the US, which are regulated because you are regulated. And some of these Forex companies are regulated, some are not quite regulated. What, what is the so, so someone said to me, so when I trade the British pound on the CME, it's a, a 6B. But if I trade it over here, it's GBP USD. What's the difference? Tom, over to you. Okay, well, so the Forex, the GBP USD, that is uh, generally settled two days. You have to have a count. You have to have an agreement with the counterparty, right? So you can't just trade with anybody. 
you have to set that agreement up. You have to ex- establish limits. And then you're most likely beholden to their quote. So you might see a quote on GBP in the news or on your on your news service or your quote service, and they could quote you something that's uh, in their favor, right? Whereas on an exchange like the CME where you're trading the futures, first of all, the difference is there's an expiration date. So that value might be a little bit off depending on uh, how far out we are. It's quoted a little bit differently, right? The, the U.S. dollar... I think everything's in terms of the U.S. dollar or vice versa. Um, But you might see like Japanese yen is quoted in the foreign exchange as like 145, but it's 0.076632 on the exchange. It's just inverse. But the thing, the great thing about trading the futures is you you set you've got an account, you've got a brokerage account, and that's all you really need. You don't care who the counterparty is. Just like every other future, you're you're buying or selling a futures contract. And so from that standpoint, it's a lot easier to trade. Uh, um, and then, of course, the difference of, in price, of course, is, is the time value of that contract. Whereas as spot, as it's called in the foreign exchange market, it's always a two-day settlement. It's today's price settled two days out. You're not really concerned about what the price is on the third Thursday of the month, the third Friday of the month. Um, whenever it whenever that contract expires, you could probably go into a lot more things. And Kegs, I'm sure, has his own, own opinions as well. But uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. Advantage futures, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, and and I can tell you that having worked with Kegs for over 20 years, he's a, he's an expert in his field. And there are other people at Ninja that that can advise you on this. The reason I'm bringing it up, by the way. Is because I've got a lot. I got a whole load of emails from different people for some reason in the last few weeks asking questions, and so this is a good opportunity to do it. Now, I, I, we're talking futures here, but but you know, Ninja Trade does pro- provide end of day stock data. Now, I, I need to figure it all out. But 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 I did get Gregory, my colleague Gregory Markle, in. I think he's in the room, but we can't add people in. I understand that. But but Gregory Margolin um, is uh, the, our chief technology officer, very smart and knows his stuff. And I, I was talking to him today about, hey, I've got to set this up, do this, do this. He said, well, he said, are you allowed to show a stock? I said, well, I, I don't think there's a problem with it. It's the principles, isn't it? I mean, I can show futures. I've got the e-mini S&P here, but we've got Bitcoin. But there was a stock that, that he said, well, look, it's a stock. But the same principles appear on the futures markets almost weekly. I said, well, I tell you what, I'll show it. Okay. And, and it's a stock. This is not a futures contract. But don't get me wrong, the principles don't change. And this is the part I think is very important. It doesn't matter what Gavin Holmes is trading or what Wyckoff Williams Investments Gibraltar is doing or any of these things. What we're teaching is 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 this the the, the Wyckoff method, right? And you know, reading this and looking at some of the charts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tom, I'm going to have to scan this and send this to you because it is quite remarkable. You look and you say that, that the same things happen. So this is something that we would refer to, um, and we we do as climactic action in, in a stock. Now this happened in BP when I was in. Massachusetts at, the, at MIT in, in 2010, they said, well, you know, it's terrible. You know, BP are going out of business. But we can see something going on here. So I'm just giving everyone a, a heads up here. We've got what could be accumulation of a stock, but we cannot do a thing based on the Ninja Trader platform because everything's red. And I've got my Smart Center Pro, which I'll show you all later. And we'll, well, we haven't got time to show you it all. But you can see here that it's all starting to set up. Now, everyone says, oh, I tell you, you traders, you you talk about everything in hindsight. We're not. We're waiting. But everything is red. There's no way you could buy this. It's the same with the S&P. It's the same with certain instruments. You, You just can't do it. You have to wait. Microsoft was slightly different. You know, I'm using a strategy that I personally use, but he uses unusual time frames. And I got this from a, a professor of mathematics. And he said, well, have you looked at these time frames? Now, I don't really show this publicly, but today I, th- I thought I would. 
And the reason is I'm going to be using this when I'm doing the live trading stuff with, with Tiru. But why a 21-day chart? Why a 13-day chart? Why an 8-day chart? Why a 5-day chart? Well, look at the chart. Okay? So we go to Microsoft, which is a stock, and we can see all the indications of buying coming in. Everything's turned green. And even here, this is a weekly chart a few weeks ago. A test in a rising market, which is what it is. It's a test. If you don't know what a test is and no supply, you'll figure it out. So I, I, I just want to say to all of you here, because we've only got five minutes left, your mind is like a parachute. It's best used when open. You jump out of a plane with a parachute, you don't open it, you're dead. So, so you, 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 your mind's like a parachute. Second thing that Tom pointed out there, which I like, was the pilot checking the plane on the outside before getting in and looking at the cockpit. That's what pilots do. I'm not saying pilot, and, and with respect, Tom, I don't mean it's disrespectful, but I've taught quite a few pilots to trade and they find it very difficult because they're looking for certainty. But I've got some books here next to me that I'm going to share with you now. And I, I hope, hopefully you can see this one. Okay, yeah, it's by Richard Nay. And I can you see that, Tom? I don't know if you yep. can see that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And it's personally signed by Richard to me. Wow. And this book, okay, talks all about well, it's 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 making it in the market, is the book. There's the for those of you that can get hold of it. But that's an original copy, right? And then you say, okay, so how do you get your knowledge, Gavin? Well. This is the Wall Street. This was gifted to me. It's called the Wall Street Gang. Okay. And it's also personally signed by Nay. I've read it more than once. And that explains what you need to know in the market. And then that information turned up in that, the book that I wrote. And, of course, my wife's on at me about the third book. But for the moment, Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money was all about reading volume and volume spread analysis. And that book is available to everyone here. Now, the reason I make it available is very straightforward. You know, it's been translated, I think, into several languages now, and people have pirated it. I don't care. The point is, I want you to understand what volume actually is. And what we've done, I'm just going to show you something very quickly. This is a screenshot from my colleague, Tiru Nagapan master the markets where they've looked at price and this is not available yet on ninja trader just be clear so it's not you can't they've, they've got to go through the ecosystem process but the interesting thing is they've got indicators that measure price action and it's very very powerful we don't work with we work with very few companies in fact two is the only one because it picks up price action now what you're looking at is volume spread analysis combined with price action and that is incredibly, incredibly powerful. It's in only powerful, okay, if you understand how to read it. And to do that, we are going to give you this. And this is only for people who are listening to this on Ninja Trader and their platform, okay? And it's just, there's nothing, you don't have to do anything. You just literally put your uh, details in here. And then when we do a live trading session, which we will be doing in the next week, we'll invite you. You've got the whole book called Master the Markets, which is actually the same name as Tiru's company, but that's more of an accident. <laughs> he didn't copy it, so we know that. And then you've got the copy of my book. If you want to find out more, then um, there's two things you can do. You can click on the live chat button here, which is on our website, and that's my wife, Laura. And and then, or you, could, you can um, go to um, the, the, the Trade to Win website, which is another one. But that is the place to go. So, so it's basically really simple. It's tradeguider.com forward slash ninja. And with our compliments, you get you get that. And then I can say without a shadow of a doubt that I fully endorse the Ninja Trader platform, of course, but because I use it. But it's better than that, is they do a lot of educational stuff, which you're seeing here. And I I, I give my great thanks. Uh, to Tom Schneider, to, to Jim Cagnina and the whole team out there, because without 
them doing this stuff, we wouldn't have the information. With that being said, um, I, I hand over to Tom and I say to all of you who are learning to trade or very experienced traders, we're here to help you. We will help you. And um, as I always say, may your God bless you. Namaste. Thank you. Gavin, thank you so much for those kind words. And, and you know, I hope uh, you viewers will go over to their site, to, to Gavin's site, tradeguider.com slash ninja, and, and take advantage of, of reading his book and certainly the Tom Williams book, and then join the, the live trading. Um, there were a couple of questions, Gavin, but they all funneled, I think, to this page, which is Pearson Trotman the third said, what will be the name of this package and software? So you're seeing this right here. If you go to Trade Guider, you can find out more information. It's The, the indicators are not part of the basic uh, platform. So when you when you first start with Ninja Trader, you download the platform. They're not going to be there. You'll have to get them from uh, Trade Guider. Sign up for the service, and then and then you'll get the uh, permissions to 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 get those uh, to install those uh, software uh, that gives you the indicators. And then Jim in Alabama says, "What do you call these indicators?" So same thing. If you go to nin uh, tradeguider.com slash ninja, you'll you'll find out more information about that. Or you can go to the Ninja Trader ecosystem and look up Trade Guider. That's also a good place to start if you uh, do a search on Ninja Trader ecosystem, um, and that that'll help you with that. Um, just quickly, Tom, before we finish, uh, for those that have asked that question, at one of our websites, and we've got several, is volume spread analysis dot com. I'm aware of time. There's an interview with the guy that taught me. It's here, okay, and there's a, a an explanation of what happened to the BP chart why it went up and all of that it's all there that's and again you can go to the ninja trader site we're on there it, it, there's but if you want to if you want to connect with us the the easy way is the live chat button and i'm happy to talk to any trader that's genuinely interested in making themselves better no problem and so is tiru uh, we're, we're both the same and we'll we'll work with you but again it's the same thing all of the information is right in front of you Okay, you can, I mean, if you go to volumespreadanalysis.com, it tells you everything about what I've just explained in 45 minutes. I've had a little chance and we're two minutes over, but I'm aware of that. But you can go here, you can see who 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 is Richard Nay? Who are the players? Who taught us this? Who are the teachers, the masters? Okay, there's Tyrion. You can find all about what the history is and then make up your own mind. Is this something that you want to persevere with and if you do we'll help if it's something you say it's a load of rubbish fine but we will help you tom i'll let you wrap up well thank you gavin and again thanks for coming back on and uh being a guest on traders workshop it's always a pleasure to work with you um in, in this endeavor and i look forward to you know finally meeting you in person uh hopefully in in december but maybe next year as well uh when i come out to london um and I should say the UK because if I'm invited, I'll go. I'll I'll go wherever you are, Gavin. Um, but thank you very much, and thanks to the viewers um, for contributing to the chat. Uh, please follow up with Gavin; a great guy to talk to and learn more about the markets. Very smart system here. And um, in the meantime, uh, we do have a bars closing today, as we do every day. And Tuesdays, it's Jim Cagnina. Uh, so Jim Cagnino will be finishing the day with bars closing at 3.15 Eastern. In the meantime, I want to wish everybody a great trading day. We'll see you next time.